Uh, Our number one men's golfer is Ryan Fox, and that elevates him into the top 25 provisionally in the world. Have you come back down to earth yet? Thanks, Marty. Yeah, uh, definitely have come back down to earth. There's a little bit of sickness in our household at the moment. No, no COVID, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been on... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's come back down to earth to babysitting duties and um, housekeeping duties, uh, yeah, which is... It is what it is, right? But I, I did, we did get a nice little celebration on Sunday night as a family and um, probably gives it a bit of a chance to sink in as well, which is cool. Four shots off the lead going into the final day. What were your thoughts when you're teeing off final day? To be honest, not much. I know that sounds weird, but I was just out there and you know, trying to play as good as I can and see if I could make something of it. And I obviously got off to a pretty good start and Richard Mansell got off to the opposite start and all of a sudden through seven holes, I'm leading the tournament and um, everything felt pretty good for the most part from there. You know, the last, you know, three or four holes were, were pretty nervy and you know happy I got through them. But um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty overall, a pretty calm experience, which, it sounds kind of strange and it was kind of nice though to be honest well i got a lot of questions from Tolf here and this is just just before i actually start asking these because he's coming on to uh, have a chat to us afterwards he says pass on my congrats to him i stayed up and watched it all live on the sunday night now he's an old man mate i know you know that okay um this is the best yeah. day for kiwi golf for men since michael campbell won the u.s open in 2005 now brendan is my I, my golf guru, I go to him for everything to do with golf because he's bored me titless about it for about 20 years. And so that's <laughs> massive praise, Ryan. And also the fact he stayed up so late says a hell of a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't thought about it in that way. But, yeah, that's that's pretty cool to hear. I mean, obviously, you know, Danny's won on the PGA Tour since since Cambo won um, the US Open. But, yeah, it's uh, that's pretty high praise and pretty impressive from Telf to stay up that late. I did hear of uh, a lot of people that did. I think one of my best mates watched every shot, had had 60 minutes sleep, did some family duties in the morning and went straight to work. Wow. I don't think he had a very good day on Monday, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool to hear stories like that, that, you know, people were, uh, you know, have that much support or were willing to support that much and, and stay up till God knows what hour in the middle of the night. And, yeah, that means a lot. All right, he says, and these are Tell's questions, mate. Ryan Fox is on the platform uh, for us. He says um, he had a three-shot lead with three holes to play, only to play a couple of poor shots on the 17th. Did you get a touch of the old nerves at that stage? Yes, I can safely say 17 is one of the most iconic and one of the most horrible holes in golf. Um, you've just got trouble lying everywhere. There's a nice big hotel on the right with that's out of bounds. You've got a nice big bunker on the left. You've, it's called the road hole because there's two roads over the back of the green, um, which you don't get a drop off. So there's, you know, it's pretty easy to make bogey or worse down there. And, um, you know, obviously with a couple of shot lead going onto that hole, it's, it's trying to play to not make a big mistake. And I tried hard to make a big mistake but managed to get away with only making both and made it a little bit more comfortable coming down the last ask him he says about the 56 um, foot putt he sank on the par 4 15th I presume that's foot that little symbol there did he sense then did you sense then that you were likely to win yes and no I mean I, the weird thing there wasn't many leaderboards out there um, I sort of knew where I stood on the 10th tee and I, I made a few birdies and a bogey um from 10 and I I knew I was going to have a good chance and then I kind of found out on 16 16 green that I was I was three ahead at that, that point and um, 18 was a birdie hole so I kind of expected to be two ahead or, or potentially one ahead playing 18 and that's kind of kind of what happened but I, I knew that birdie putt on 15 was was a pretty big one and you know that's there's, kind of, there's so much luck involved in that there's there's enough enough breeze that it's pretty hard to read the putt properly um, and all you're really trying to do is get it up somewhere near the hole and make it a pretty stress-free second putt for par and um, yeah, it was a nice bonus that it went in and you know, that was that was a big moment in that round of golf for me. Is that one of the longest or the longest you've ever hit, Ryan? Probably not a lot in terms of overall length randomly but in terms of the putt that actually mattered, um, yeah, it would be one of the, one of the longer ones. Um, 
I hold another one. I don't think it was quite from that far at Raz Al Khaimah this year when I won in February. And it's kind of the same thing. That was on the 12th from about 40 or 45 feet. And I think I had a one shot lead at that point and hold a hold that big putt and you know, ended up winning by a few in the end. And um, you'd kind of need stuff like that to happen to win a golf tournament. You need a little bit of luck. And there's certainly um, the percentage of holding a 30 plus 40 foot, 40 foot plus putt is pretty low. Um, I think, you know, it's down one, 2%. So there's a whole lot of luck involved in doing it. And um, yeah, it's, it's certainly nice when they come off like that. And, you know, the one on Sunday um, from, I, yeah, I didn't know it was 56 foot. I assumed it was somewhere over 40. So yeah, that's, it's pretty cool to hold something like that when it matters. Ryan Fox is with us. We're talking about winning the Dunhill on the weekend. Final question from 12. How good was it to head off Rory, who made one of his legendary charges, picking up six birdies in a nine-hole stretch during that last round? Were you aware of that? Sort of, but not really. Um, I, I saw when on nine, there's a leaderboard on the 10th tee, basically, which is right beside the ninth green. And I'd seen at that point that Rory was, he'd got to tie it for the lead at that point. And then I birdied nine and 10, and 12 to, I figure I must have been at least one in front at that point, but Rory was also on a charge and had a par five to come and the drive will par four 18th. And, um, you know, I figured I, I probably needed to at least get to 15, probably 16 to win the golf tournament to hold him off. And, um, you know, it looked like he sort of played the, the last couple of holes, a bit like me struggled down, down 15, 16, 17, which is pretty easy to do around that golf course. But, you know, to, to win against a field like that and and hold off Rory is pretty cool. I mean, it, it might have been different if he was in that last group with me. There's probably a bit more pressure in that regard, but he was probably probably an hour, just under an hour ahead of me. And it's, it's for, for him, it's kind of a nice place to be. You're trying to set a target and kind of hope guys make mistakes coming down the stretch. And, um, you know, thankfully, I, I, I didn't make too many down those last few holes. Previous best 46 in the top 25 provisionally since 96, three Kiwi men have been in that top 50, Michael Nobolo and Danny Lee. So at, you know, whether this stays that, whether you drop a little bit, do you feel right now after that tournament that you're at the top of your game or when have you played better or felt you've played better at the end of a tournament? To be honest, this is going to sound really weird. I didn't feel like I had it at all last week. I was having a bit of a meltdown on the range on Tuesday and, um, you know, really, really struggling, feeling uncomfortable over the ball. And I'd lost my golf clubs the week before between London and Paris and, you know, had, had a bunch of stuff go wrong. Our little one had been sick. Um, I'd, I'd hurt my knee a couple of weeks earlier. Mum and dad had come up for, to watch four tournaments and I'd pulled out a two of them with injury and missed the cut and won by missing a butt and, and lost my golf bag in the process of doing it. So it was, you know, there was no signs at all of me playing well last week. And I probably didn't feel that comfortable on the golf course. A lot of it with, with my golf swing and my golf game, but I managed to sort of, there was that peaceful feeling as well that it was just, it is what it is. I'll just, figure out how to get it around and you know I obviously did a really really good job of that last week and kind of proved that you know almost the opposite you don't I don't miss don't necessarily see, need your a game to win or or contend in a tournament um you know it's it's a lot more about the mental side of it and and just managing your game really well you know I definitely went through a patch earlier this year where I'd say I hit the ball or felt a lot more comfortable with my golf swing and, and everything else. The, the one thing that did work really well over last week was, you know, chipping and putting. I think I did that really, really well. And as I said, the mental side of it, the, the managing of my game was, was really good last week. And I think that that sort of helped out a lot. And you know, we had a couple of bad that were well, one really bad day of weather and a couple of windy days as well last week as, as expected in Scotland and in October. And, um, you know, that, that probably helped the mental side of it as well. You know, you'd, and when it's really bad, you're not worried about how you're swinging it, whatever you're doing. You're just trying to hit it forward and not make too many mistakes. Ryan Fox is with us. Did you get your golf clubs back? Yeah, I got them back on the Thursday night of of the Dunhill. So 
it was a, it was a bit of a mess to be honest. We flew London to Paris on the Monday before the French Open. Didn't nothing arrived, and then a couple of days later, London's telling me Ring Air France. London's telling me that it's definitely in Paris. Ring Air France in Paris, and they're telling me it's still in London, and no one could work out where they were. I've hence bought air tags, so hopefully I'll never have that happen to me again. Um, but yeah, it, it was um, it oh, was man. one of those silly ones, and then and, and then you know, I, I, at that point, I just expected well, these things have you know gone into some kind of void, and I'll never see them again. Or if I do, it'll be three months down the track, and they'll all be in pieces. So I kind of went through the process to get new orthotics, which are pretty important for me with flat feet and bowed legs, and getting you golf shoes and luckily Shrixon had a new set of irons out last week um, so I used them and I had a driver and everything that was starting to work all right and then randomly get a message from Air France that your golf clubs are on a, on a flight from Paris to, to Edinburgh arriving on Thursday and um, you know the, a couple of people at the tournament uh, were were down at the airport and managed to locate them for me and bring them up to Andrews and um, you know got everything six o'clock Thursday night and that certainly helped out of it over the weekend but it's yeah it's, I'm not the only one that's fallen foul of that this year seems to be a lot of a lot of golf clubs being lost every week it used to be sort of one or two guys a year would have it happen to them it seems like it's one or two guys a week now so um it was just just seemed to be my turn at the French Open and obviously it's been a bit frustrating when it you know what you think could be two or three days turns into ten Meant to be. Absolutely meant to be. Right, a couple more questions. We'll let you go. And thank you so much for your time. Ryan Fox is with us on the platform after winning the Dunhill on the weekend. Telv, another question from Telv. Ask him if it's likely he may now get a card to play full-time on the US PGA Tour next year because as part of its fight with Live Golf, they're giving out cards to the top money earners on the DP World Tour, but it may not come into effect until 2024. What do you know about it? Uh, yes, yeah, so Telv's right with the, with the back end of that. So it starts... Um, the 23 season for us on the money list then leads to the 24 season on the PJ Tour. So it would be a would have been nice if it was this year because I think I would have guaranteed one of those 10 cards very early on in the season. But, um, you know, the other side of it is being you know, so highly ranked in the world now that opens a few doors early next year. There's a lot of tournaments in the States that have a top 50 world ranking category. Um, you know, all the majors have that. Uh, the match play, a couple of the other the players' championships. So, you know, there's a there's a pretty good chance I'm going to get get a few starts in those events through world ranking, um, which is yeah, that's a nice bonus in that respect and something I kind of haven't I haven't really had a chance to to think about too much. My managers flagged it with me and said, "Hey, look, this is potentially what next year looks like," but um, had a few other things to deal with over the last couple of days and that you know that can certainly wait for a little while until I figure out what, what the plan is but there's definitely a few more doors open because of the, because of that win which is nice yeah because you've said in the past that your long term goal is the PGA Tour is that still the case because Telford wanted me to ask again he said look ask him about the live golf and I've asked you about that and I know you constantly get asked about that and your, your reply has always been the same that you'd rather not or they haven't approached you but you actually want to play the PGA is that still the case? Yeah, it is. I mean, look, you can never say, you can never say never in terms of a live golf thing. You know, a, a whole lot's changed in six months in that respect, and you never know what's going to happen, you know, in a year or two years' time. And in, in, in that regard, but you know, the, the dream for me is to play on the PGA Tour, and I don't want to uh, to do anything to jeopardise that. And um, you know, everyone's seen what the fallout's been in that regard in the golf world, so. Um, yeah, this is this has opened a lot of doors in that respect. And you know, if you'd have asked me a couple of years ago, you know, the PGA Tour dream probably wasn't as strong as what it what it was a few years before that. You know, I was quite happy playing in Europe. I really enjoy it over here. You know, enjoy the culture. Got lots of good mates over here on tour. Um, you know, enjoy travelling around all the different countries in Europe and. I probably never played that well in the states, but you know now I've got the opportunity to go there. That sort of that drives definitely back in that regard. Ryan, it's always fantastic talking to you, mate. And uh, just looking at your profile, you're only 35. Why do I keep thinking? I mean, but that's because I I keep forgetting I'm as old as your old man, mate. So that's, I I keep thinking we're the same age or around about the same age. You're 30 bloody five. You're still a pup, mate. 
Well, sort of. I kind of don't feel like it on tour anymore. I mean, you look at the Hoygaard twins who are, have won, I think, five times or six times between them on tour, and they're, they're 21. Right. Um, so, you know, they're 30, you know, mid-30s kind of used to be more the peak in golf, and everything used to be a bit later, but, you know, it's it's getting earlier and earlier now, and, and guys come out on tour ready to win at 21, 22, which, you know, Used to happen a little bit, but certainly not as as much as it does now. But I've got a few grey hairs and you know a bit of a dad bod and all of that stuff now, which <laughs> comes with being thirty five and having a kid. Um, I, 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 there's definitely times I feel like I'm your age, to be honest. Uh, look, lovely talking to you, mate. It's just, and yeah, also again, congratulations. It's just thrilling. I mean, you know, um, you got so much support over here. People love hearing your stories and watching you play and everything else. And I also just love the fact that when we started talking that, you know, you win the Dunhill, you are, you know, you can be as high as a kite in your own head for a while, but you come home and, and uh, Mrs. is sick and baby's sick, mate. And just, you know, the golf clubs can sit by the front door. You've got business to take care of, mate. And that's business is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, life doesn't give you any breaks in that regard. And, um, you know, it would have been certainly nice to be able to celebrate it properly, but that's, just what it is and i've enjoyed being a dad and to be honest my caddy has my golf clubs and i've got to go pick them up from birmingham tomorrow because i didn't want to i didn't want to chuck them on a plane again in case i lost them for another 10 days <laughs> um so so yeah it's uh it's, it's kind of yeah it's it's been one of those cool things and i mean i, I definitely save a proper celebration you know to do it with friends and family when i get home although yeah it was great to have have mum and dad up for that experience. I mean, they haven't been up to Europe for, for quite a while. And, um, yeah, to, to have them up and experience that, especially after what had been a pretty crappy three weeks for them previous to that, um, you know, with, with the injury and, and everything like that. So, um, yeah, that, that was a great experience to have the whole family there. My, actually, my wife had never been to a tournament on the DP World Tour that I'd won. She, she the two previous wins she was at home for, so she got to witness that in person. Even though she didn't feel overly good on Sunday, it was you know she enjoyed being out there and being being a part of it. And um, you know, also want to say the support from back home has been amazing. I mean, I'm, I spent literally two days doing media and and trying to reply to as many messages as I can, and it's it's just been crazy, which is which is awesome, and I appreciate always appreciate all the support.